At this time, I'm going to appoint a select committee to bring our special guests onto the floor for a special presentation. As I call your names, members, if you could please retire to the rear of the chamber. Assembly members Bonta, Burke, Campos, Chavez, Gonzalez, Gordon, Levine, Lopez, Lowe, Mainshine, Mullen, O'Donnell, Perea, Salas, Ting, and Weber. And I also want to welcome our counterparts from the State Senate. We have three special guests from the Senate. Uh, if I could ask Senators Galgiani, Lada, and Leno to please proceed to the back of the chamber. And at this time, I'd like to invite up Assembly Speaker Tony G. Atkins and the California Legislative LGBT Caucus Chair Susan Eggman to move to the center aisle to receive our honorees. And now moving to the introduction of the LGBT Pride Month honorees for 2015, the clerk will read. Honoree Donald Abrams is a chief of the Hematology Oncology Division at San Francisco General Hospital, an integrative oncologist at the UCSF Osher Center for Integrative Medicine, and a professor of clinical medicine at UCSF. He's escorted by Assemblymember Ting and Senator Leno. Dr. Abrams is renowned for his research and clinical expertise in the study of HIV, AIDS, and cancer-related conditions. This commitment has led him on a journey of collaborative research, discovery of alternative treatment options, and practices that have benefited and extended the quality of life of patients. Dr. Abrams' current research interests include antiretroviral therapies, interventions for HIV-related wasting, alternative therapies, and clinical trial design. He received a grant from the NIH to conduct the first clinical trial of marijuana use in patients with HIV infection. His last NIDA-funded trial investigated the possible pharmacokinetic interaction between vaporized cannabis, opioid analgesics, and patients with chronic pain. Dr. Abrams has received numerous accolades throughout his career. He was named a National Merit Scholar at Brown University, had received the American Cancer Society Career Development Award, the American Foundation of AIDS Research Award of Courage, and the International Association of Cannabis as Medicine Award for Clinical Research. Dr. Abrams' participation on local, state, national, and international advisory committees on HIV, AIDS, and cancer has resulted in awards of about $38 million for research in these areas. He has been a contributing author of books and other publications in his field. Dr. Abrams holds degrees from Brown University and Stanford University School of Medicine and received his California medical license 37 years ago. Honorees Sue Conley and Peggy Smith are co-owners of the Cowgirl Creamery. They are escorted by assembly members Levine and Perea. This is the story of two friends, a baby blue Chevy van, and a lifelong love affair with food. Sue Conley and Peggy Smith took a hippie trip to San Francisco in 1976 after finishing degrees at the University of Tennessee. Both established careers in some of San Francisco's most famous kitchens, Peggy spending 17 years at Chez Panisse and Sue co-owning Betts Ocean View Diner in Berkeley. By the early 1990s, Peggy and Sue started Tamales Bay's Food, a marketing vehicle to help West Marin's farms and dairies get their products to the Bay Area's finest chefs. Their first, first location in Point Reyes was a renovated hay barn. The company got its name after the couple and a friend saw two women on horseback. Two decades, dozens of awards, two creameries, four retail stores, and 2,000 tons of cheese later, it's safe to say they've earned their 10-gallon hats. Calgo Creamery cheeses are sold to over 500 stores, independent cheese shops, farmers markets and restaurants, and nationally through Whole Foods markets. And true to their community ethos, Tamales Bay's Food continues to support and promote artisan cheese making, offering over 200 cheeses from all over California, America, and Europe through their website and retail locations. Honoree Robert Garcia is the mayor of Long Beach. He is escorted by Assemblymember O'Donnell and Senator Lara. Dr. Robert Garcia is the 28th mayor of Long Beach. As mayor, he has taken a leadership role in balancing the city budget, reforming pensions, expanding park space, and investing in technology. Mayor Garcia is committed to moving Long Beach forward by attracting tech and green jobs, creating new educational partnerships, and rebuilding aging streets, sidewalks, and alleys. He's a member of the Public Policy and Communications Faculty at the University of Southern California and has taught communication studies at both Cal State Long Beach and Long Beach City College. 
He co-founded and launched the Long Beach Post, a Long Beach-based media website and newspaper, an important community resource. Mayor Garcia immigrated to the United States from Lima, Peru. He grew up in Covina and was raised by three strong women, his mother, grandmother, and aunt. He was the first in his family to attend and graduate college. While at CSULB, Robert was elected student body president. He has been named one of Long Beach's most innovative minds by Long Beach Magazine, to Advocate Magazine's 40 Under 40 list in 2010, and to Instinct Magazine's Leading Men in 2009. In 2014, Robert was the recipient of the Quality California Vanguard Award. His previous public service includes serving as a California Coastal Commissioner, as well as Long Beach Council Member and Vice Mayor. Honoree Virginia Garula is escorted by Assemblymember Salas and Senator Galgiani. The Honorable Virginia Garula was the first Latina to serve on Porterville City Council and the first Latina mayor in the city's history. She was elected in 1995 and served two terms until 2003. She was the mayor for three years. In 2012, she was elected for her third term and appointed mayor once again and is currently serving as a council member. In June of 2013, Mayor Garilla issued a proclamation that would identify June as LGBT Pride Month in Porterville. Members of the community turned out in massive numbers at a public hearing to object. In November, the council removed her as mayor. Prior to her entry into politics, Ms. Garilla was dir director of Extended Opportunity Program and Services and other key positions at Porterville College. Virginia is committed to community service and believes leadership requires you to listen, engage, and connect with people. She believes in doing the right thing even when it's not the most popular thing to do. She contributes her well-being to life and God. <laughs> Honoree Chris Hayashi is the Executive Director of the Transgender Law Center. Accepting on his behalf is Ms. Cecilia Chung, Deputy Director of the Transgender Law Center. She's escorted by Assemblymembers Lowe and Burke. Chris Hayashi is the Executive Director at the Transgender Law Center, an entity that works to change law, policy, and attitudes so that all people can live safely, authentically, and free from discrimination, regardless of their gender identity or expression. He has been active in social, racial, and economic justice and has been organizing for over 20 years. Mr. Hayashi served as the Executive Director, Co-Director of the Audre Lorde Project, a lesbian, gay, bisexual, two-spirit, trans, and gender non-conforming people of color organizing center based in New York City for 10 years. Honoree Dolores Jacobs is the CEO of the San Diego LGBT Community Center. She is escorted by assembly members Mainshine, Weber, and Chavez. Dr. Jacobs is responsible for managing one of the oldest, largest, and most dynamic LGBT community centers in the country. Since Dolores took the executive position with the center in 2001, the organization has grown into a vibrant, $4 million community-based nonprofit agency with more than 40 staff and 800 volunteers. Today, the center provides more than 50,000 service visits per year through 40 programs, including programs specializing in providing service to those living with HIV, youth, seniors, families, Latino services, a cutting-edge permanent supportive housing project for LGBT and HIV-positive transition-aged youth, and a large behavioral health department. Dr. Jacobs is a trained psychologist who is best known for her work collaborating between a variety of sectors, healthcare, private, public, corporate, and nonprofit. Complementing that award-winning work is Jacob's unceasing effort to empower community members and to ensure that clients and organizations remember the twin mission of all nonprofits, to provide care for their constituencies, and to work tirelessly to impact public policies that can improve the lives of our most vulnerable community members. Honoree Joanne Keatley is the director of the Center for Excellence for Transgender Health. She's escorted by assembly members Campos and Bonta. Ms. Keatley is responsible for overseeing all aspects of the center's scope of work. She develops the infrastructure to support a successful and sustainable center, provides day-to-day -day leadership of the staff, and oversees the statewide community advisory board. She supervises the design and implementation of the website, identifies potential funding sources, assures the quality of deliverables, and is a liaison with the California Department of Public Health, Office of AIDS. She has directed numerous National Institutes of Health transgender research projects and co-founded the Transgender Resources and Neighborhood Space Project. She chairs the San Francisco Transgender Empowerment Advocacy and Mentorship Team and holds other leadership positions in this area.
Honoree Matthias Stevens is an attorney from San Diego. He's escorted by assembly members Gonzalez and Lopez. Mr. Stevens le lectures at UC San Diego, where he teaches four courses, including race and law and the law and sex. He has also lectured widely on diversity, reproductive rights, marriage equality, and LGBT civil rights, including recent lectures at the San Diego County Bar Association on the marriage decisions and diversity in the legal workplace. In addition, he provides diversity training to such entities as the San Diego Volunteer Lawyers Program, Sony Electronics, and Morrison and Forrester, among others, and provides guest commentary on KPBS television and radio on LGBT civil rights issues. Mr. Stevens' community service includes serving as a pro judge pro tem in the small claims court, on boards and commissions, and an after-school music program for at-risk youth. After graduating from Rutgers School of Law, Stevens' legal career began as a litigation associate. Today, he owns his own firm. Important litigation matters have included the groundbreaking Title IX case against the San Diego Community College District, resulting in constructive change for women athletes in the district and the case against the City of San Diego concerning public parkland leases with Boy Scouts of America. He recently successfully defended against an attempt to take advantage of anti-LGBT laws in Louisiana to nullify California custody agreements and a case involving same-sex parents. He was named a top attorney three years in a row by San Diego Magazine and has been bestowed many other honors for his professional and civic work. Honoree Ken Yeager is Santa Clara County Supervisor. He's escorted by assembly members Gordon and Mullen. Mr. Ken Yeager is the first openly gay elected official in Santa Clara County. For more than four decades, he has been a pioneer of LGBT rights in Silicon Valley. In 1984, Ken co-founded the Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee, a four-county LGBT and transgender political action group, the first of its kind in the region. His public service career began in 1992 when he was elected to the San Jose Evergreen Community College District. In 2000, Ken was elected to the San Jose City Council. He secured $1.8 million to remodel the Billy DeFrank LGBT Community Center. He sought LGBT candidates for the city boards and commissions. He authored an amendment to the city's harassment policy to include protections for gender identity and asked that the city recognize all valid marriage licenses of city employees. As a supervisor, Ken preserved funding for HIV rapid testing in Santa Clara County. He appointed the first transgender woman to the county's commission on the status of women and expanded staffing and funding for HIV AIDS programs in the county. In 2013, he officiated over the first same-sex wedding in Santa Clara County after the Supreme Court invalidated Proposition 8. On July 5th, he married 27 same-sex couples, a record day for all wedding ceremonies performed in Santa Clara County. Later that year, he worked with county staff to implement the Equity Project to provide greater dignity and fairness for LGBTQ youth in our juvenile justice system. I want to take a moment and congratulate our nine amazing honorees. Could you please join me in one final round of applause for all of them? I have a few final announcements uh, related to today's ceremony. I want to encourage all of our guests and visitors to please view a special exhibit on the second floor rotunda of the Capitol in honor of LGBT Pride Month. And on your desk, colleagues, are mementos, a sheet of Harvey Milk's postage stamp, a rainbow lapel pin, and a package of Skittles candy to keep you through today's meeting. And if you'd like to personally greet any of our honorees, there is a welcome reception in their honor in room 317, which will begin shortly. And on behalf of the chair of our LGBT caucus, Dr. Eggman, as well as the members of our California LGBT caucus, we want to thank you for your participation and attention today. This concludes our ceremony. I'd like to ask our honorees if you could please stick around for one final photo. Uh, we are going to take a brief recess to allow our guests to depart from the chamber, but members, please do not leave the chamber. We obviously have other business on file. Thank you very much.
Colleagues, we are back in session. If we could now move to business on the daily file. Now to the second reading. The clerk will read. Senate Bill 242 with amendments. Now on to concurrences. Uh, if we could go to file item 2, AB 149, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 149 by Assemblymember Chavez and actually into water management. Mr. Chavez, you may open. Yes, AB 49 would delay the uh, due date for water district in, my, in San Diego. It's normally due in 2020 by six months to July 1st, 2021. The amend amendment suggested by the Senate Committee on Natural Resource and Water, which I have accepted, corrects a drafting error regarding the delay. Uh, reported to the legislator, I respectfully ask for your aye vote on AB 149. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote. Who desire to vote? The clerk will close the roll and tie the votes. I 63, noes 2. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going now to file item 3, AB 198, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 198 by Assembly Member Frazier and actually into vehicles. Mr. Frazier, you may open. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, AB 198 is back on concurrence. Uh, is a common sense measure that will allow uh, provide the law enforcement officers responding to traffic incidents with the flexibility to rapidly remove disabled vehicles and reduce traffic delays. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Seen and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, I 67, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. Going now to file item 4, AB 250, the clerk will read. Assembly Bill 250 by Assembly Member Obernolte and actually the Healing Arts. Mr. Obernolte, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, AB 250 clarifies that marriage and family therapist interns may provide telehealth services under supervision as part of their licensure. This measure passed this chamber last month and is back from the Senate on concurrence. The amendments are minor and technical. I respectfully request your aye vote. Seeing and hearing no further debate, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote. Who desire to vote? All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the votes, I 70, no zero. The Senate amendments are concurred in. We'll pass and retain file item five, going now to file item six, AB 298. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 298 by Assemblymember Gonzalez and actually in Fish and Wildlife. Assemblymember Gonzalez, you may open. Good morning, Mr. Speaker and members. Assembly Bill 298 is about marine protected areas. It passed by consent in both houses and returns the assembly on concurrence. Today's changes are minor and technical. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I-71, no zero. Senate amendments are concurred in. Moving to third reading, file item 7, pass and retain. File item 8, AB 304, for the purpose of amendment. Clerk will read with amendments. Assembly Bill 304 with amendments by Assembly Member Gonzalez. Ms. Gonzalez, you may open on the amendments. On the amendments, the amendments before you today are minor and technical in nature as they merely correct various drafting errors or provide clarity. Members with these amendments in print, the California Chamber of Commerce and other employee employer associations have confirmed that their previous opposition to this paid sick days cleanup bill has been removed. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. Ms. Waldron. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We support the amendments. Thank you, Ms. Waldron. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the amendments. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, the amendments are adopted. Bill is out to print and back on file. Moving briefly to motions and resolutions, Mr. Holden, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 63 and 69 to allow Assembly Member Gonzalez to take up AB 304 and mock up form without reference to file for purposes of third reading. Ms. Waldron, you are recognized. We object to that. Ms. Waldron is withholding unanimous consent. Mr. Holden moves to suspend the rules. It's seconded by Ms. Garcia. Members, this is procedural, it's not debatable. Requires 41 votes. This is a procedural vote. Clerk will open the roll. 
All members vote or desire to vote. Mr. Holden is asking for an I vote. Ms. Waldron is asking for a no vote. Mr. Holden is asking for an I vote. Ms. Waldron is asking for a no vote. Clerk will close the roll. Ayes 47, noes 20. The rules are suspended. Moving to the bill in chief. This is AB 304. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 304 by Assembly Member Gonzalez, an act relating to employment, declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Ms. Gonzalez, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last year, when this chamber passed and the governor signed the Healthy Workplaces and Healthy Families Act of 2014, I made a commitment to businesses to continue to work on the bill in order to ensure that our paid sick day policy could be implemented as seamlessly as possible. AB 304 is a result of months of work and negotiations to do just that. Among other things, AB 304 aligns the state's paid sick day laws with state law governing CalPERS retired annuities, clarifies that employers are not required to provide more than three paid sick days if the employer had a sick day policy prior to January 1, 2015 that meets specified conditions. It provides for labor management consensus in the motion picture and construction industries and provides added employer flexibility for how sick leave may be calculated for non-exempt employees. As mentioned previously, the California Chamber of Commerce and other employer organizations have removed their opposition to this cleanup bill with amendments taken in the last week. We now have organizations such as the League of California Cities, United Contractors, the Motion Picture Association of America, the, Ca the California Employment Law Council, and other employer organizations in full support of this bill. Additionally, this bill contains an urgency clause, which requires a two-thirds vote to ensure that the clarifications go into effect before workers begin to accrue paid sick leave as of July 1st. Members, this bill one-sidedly helps the business community. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. Ms. Grove, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is cleanup language on last year's uh, job killer bill for sick leave. And um, it, last year's bill was a job killer bill, and I think it's devastated a lot of employers. But this cleanup language will at least allow employers to understand how to calculate the sick leave, which it wasn't clear in last year's bill. It also will have employers help understand and clarify uh, the hours that need to be worked that wasn't in last year's bill as well. So this is a benefit to employers to be at least be able to comply with the law because last year's uh, bill was really ambiguous. So I would ask your support on this bill because it does help employers um, identify how to implement this sick leave bill. Seeing no additional discussion or debate on this item, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. Clerk will close the roll. Tie the vote. I 65, no zero on the urgency. Eyes 65, no zero on the bill. Measure passes. File item 9, pass and retain. We already dispensed with file item 10. We're moving to file item 11, that's ACR 67. The clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 67 by Assemblymember Mullen and others relative to ballot measures. Mr. David Chu, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. On behalf of the five joint authors of this resolution, including our Speaker Pro Tem, Mr. Mullen, we ask everyone to support ACR 67. This resolution states that the California State Legislature formally denounces and opposes a proposed ballot initiative that urges the most extreme violence and harm upon our LGBT communities. Mr. Speaker, permission to read? Without objection. The so-called Sodomite Suppression Act declares that LGBT individuals ought to, quote, be put to death by bullets in the head, or by any other convenient method. This measure would also bar gays and lesbians or anyone who supports the LGBT community from holding government jobs or public office or receiving any government benefits. It's disturbing that we're even having this discussion. Our resolution states that while the legislature affirms the right to free speech, it is abhorrent and repulsive that someone would call for the mass execution and intimidation based on a personal characteristic which is inherent and unchangeable. This ballot measure is completely antithetical to the principles of a civilized society. ACR 67 also states that this ballot measure reminds us of the actions inflicted on innocent people throughout history. While we celebrate LGBT pride this month with the pink triangle symbol, we must not forget that the pink triangle was first used to mark gays and lesbians in concentration camps as tens of thousands were put to death. 
Stonewall was a reaction to violent police raids of LGBT establishments. In my city, even elected officials must pass through City Hall metal detectors because of San Francisco's history of the assassination of Supervisor Harvey Milk, the first LGBT elected in California, killed with two bullets to the head. This past decade, the FBI has reported thousands of hate crimes against LGBT individuals, and in recent years, almost half of all transgender youth have been physically abused in schools. I want to thank the Judiciary Committee for its unanimous bipartisan support of this measure. As Dr. Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. I hope that all eight of us can go on record in support of this resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Mr. Thurmond, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of this resolution that speaks out against any measure that would propagate hate and violence. You know, our courts have repeatedly spoken uh, out against those uh, rulings that would get into the business of consenting adults and have said that those very rulings are unconstitutional. As recent as last week, we have seen the kind of damage and harm and hurt and tragedy that hate can provide when people speak out against a group because of their race, their sexual orientation, or even their religion. Instead, I would implore us to look to those rulings like Loving that said that our court upholds the right of an individual to love whoever they choose to, and that as long as they're consenting adults to love whoever they choose to do, and that instead we avoid anything that will propagate hate and will advocate violence. Instead, that we enforce practices and policy that focuses on tolerance, on understanding, and promoting love. I urge support of this ACR. Ms. Eggman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise as the chair of the LGBT caucus and also as a co-author of this just to say that we must stand up against hate speech wherever and whenever we see it. Uh, we know that one of the people we honored here today was a, our first time we've honored an ally because somebody who stood up, stood up with us and for us to try to proclaim a, a pride month and was uh, virtually uh, uh, demoted from her office of mayor down to council member and the uh, resolution was revoked. Uh, we know that kind of hate speech leads to this kind of thing being somebody thinks that it's okay to put on our ballot. Uh, we must stand any time any kind of hate speech occurs, and especially when it invokes people to violence simply for being who we are, I ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. Sagan. Mr. Widener, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we did deal with this extensively in the Judiciary Committee, and I was one who supported it. Uh, I will support the, initiative, uh, the, the resolution today um, because it obviously does the right thing. It says there is a hate fueled resolution out there. It is antithetical to the ideas of a civilized society and anyone uh, with, with any degree of compassion or civilization within them uh, will reject this, uh, this resolution. Um, I will, though, urge my colleagues in the full body, as I did in the, in the policy committee, um, to, to take a step back and, and look at uh, some of what you're doing here. You're, you're asking for bipartisan support. It was requested in the committee to have bipartisan support. Well, look, folks, the underlying idea is something that not only gets bipartisan support in this House for crying out loud, but would get 98.5% approval out in, out in California. The only reason you have to ask for bipartisan support. The only reason that there's any question about this is because there's a ton of stuff that's thrown in here. It goes back to 1978, and it drags up Ronald Reagan and the Briggs Initiative, and it talks about things that are absolutely unrelated to the fact that there's some goofball out there, as I've said on this floor before, who's gotten well more than the 15 minutes of fame he probably was looking for and is more than he deserves with some goofball initiative. It isn't going anywhere. It shouldn't go anywhere. This House can pass a resolution that says, if this gets on the ballot, vote against it. The House can pass a resolution that says, if somebody approaches you to sign to get this on the ballot, oppose it. This body can pass, I think, as it has a resolution saying, 
Way to go to the Attorney General who's rightfully opposing this. But as we see with so much legislation in this House, it's festooned with stuff to make political points that are absolutely unnecessary. This is a stupid initiative. We ought to say in one resolution this is a stupid initiative and be done with it. There is not a soul on this floor in their darkest days has ever said we should discriminate like this. And a resolution that says that and, res and, and recites this legislature's opposition to violence, to discrimination, to this kind of hatred, and move on. Be done with the guy who proposed this. He's the only person in the state of California that is enjoying this debate. Because look how he got us riled up. It's a stupid initiative. It should be and will be gotten rid of by the courts or by the signatories who won't sign petitions or by the voters or, God forbid, by the courts if it even gets that far. We're spending way too much time on it. But take this as a lesson for how this body dumps too much extraneous stuff. Let's do the people's business. Let's say vote against this and be done with it. Okay? I'm going to vote for this resolution. There's a whole lot of stuff in there that if I had to dig down into it, I might have a problem with, my constituents might have a problem with, but at the end of the day, resolved, the legislature thinks the Sodomite Suppression Act is stupid and urges everybody to vote against it. I'm all for that. Thank you, Mr. Weider. Mr. Tang, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also wanted to thank you for bringing this resolution forward. Um, I also wanted to join my colleague from San Francisco to quote Dr. King, who said, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So I think that's even more important when abhorrent words come forward, when we have a community that's under attack, when we actually have hate speech, but also violence that's incited, incurred, that we speak, but that we speak not as a divided house, but really as a united house. So I really urge all of us to go up to support this ACR so we can send a message as my colleague from Irvine said, to make sure that we stand absolutely against violence, absolutely against hate speech, and that we stand together as one community. Thank you. Mr. Alejo, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I was unable to also share my words of support in celebration of the prior resolution honoring LGBT month, but I couldn't help but standing up and speaking against this unconscionable, reprehensible ballot initiative that is not just here in California, but in this last week we have seen some horrible incidents, some horrible hate speech all over the country in the last week alone. But as was said earlier, even some elected officials in this state, when they simply wanted to honor LGBT Month in their city, in Tulare County, they paid a heavy price. They were attacked and demonized, and then she was later removed in a position of mayor for doing something so simple as celebrating LGBT Month. That happened last year. It was an unfortunate incident. But in this last week, we saw a multi-billionaire spew hate speech against Mexican immigrants, calling them rapists and, 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 and drug dealers. And then we had a horrible incident in South Carolina where above their state capital, the Confederate battle flag flies every day and now in California an initiative that is inciting people to commit violence and his, and his words are laden with hate speech against a group of people because of their sexual orientation, a protected class of individuals in our state. It's unbelievable that in 2015 we're still seeing incidents like this not happen not only in California but all over the country and it shows us that we have a long way to go but it's so um, basic, it's such an issue of basic civil rights that all of us, 100% of us today, should vote against this, uh, vote for this uh, um, resolution and against this initiative uh, within our state. Thank you, Mr. Lejo. Mr. Lowe, you are recognized. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. Uh, I also rise in support of this uh, resolution. You know, uh, 
some of our colleagues men have mentioned on this floor about uh, giving too much attention and time to this issue. Uh, but I would remind my colleagues that uh, this has happened many times before as it relates to civil rights issues. Silence is acceptance. This is the civil rights issue of our time. And if we don't stand up and acknowledge this, California leads in the nation. California leads in the world. And we will continue to be leaders in civil rights for all people. And not accept this hate speech. This is why we're here, to uphold the Constitution of the United States. In the Constitution of the State of California, I urge your I vote. Mr. Bloom, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I want to take exception to the notion that this is about some goofball out there. Uh, this is about some goofball who found a platform for his really, really bizarre and extreme point of view, but he found a platform, and incredibly, that platform is our initiative process. So I think it's our responsibility to speak out on this. And the, the, the parallel to what we see happening elsewhere in the country and elsewhere in the world is that other people who are out there who we might identify as goofballs are finding websites and publishing hate verbiage over and over and over again. And there are folks out there who see these things. And yes, you know, maybe mental illness plays a role in it. Maybe many things plays a role in this. But they see this hate speech. And it becomes a part of them. And then they act out. So it is our responsibility. It is our responsibility to do what we can. And in this case, this resolution is one of the things that we can and should do, and I'm proud to ask for your I vote. All discussion having ceased, Mr. Chu, you may close if you wish. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank the Speaker Pro Tem for drafting this language. I stand by, and I think many of us stand by, every phrase in this resolution. Uh, I know that there might be some dispute around language, but the language describes the long struggle for, for equal rights, for freedom, for equality. Uh, and, and sometimes that struggle has led to a backlash of anti-gay sentiment and extreme anti-gay sentiment that we have seen expressed in this ballot initiative. That being said, I do hope that every one of the 80 of us can go on the record in support of ACR 67, ask that the first roll call be for co-authors with a subsequent vote for the resolution. Thank you, Ms. Chu. Ms. Chu is asking that the first roll be open for co-authors. Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors on ACR 67. Co-authors on ACR 67. The clerk will close the roll. There are 74 co-authors added. We've been requested to take a roll call vote on this resolution. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll tie. The vote I 76, no zero. Resolution is adopted. File items 12 and 13, pass and retain. Moving to file item 14, that's AJR 23. The clerk will read. Assembly Joint Resolution 23 by Assemblymember Bonilla and others relative to Title IX. Ms. Bonilla, Ms. Bonilla, you may open on the resolution. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. I present to you AJR 23, which commemorates the 43rd anniversary of Title IX. I hope you've been enjoying watching our United States women's soccer team play in the World Cup. And it's a great example of what would not take place if we had not uh, Title IX legislation that took place back in 1972. Uh, permission to read? Without rejection. Um, the Congress in Nidal enacted Title IX, and it states, no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. 
Over the last 43 years, Title IX has been instrumental in increasing women's access to STEM education, sports participation, and reducing discriminatory barriers in education. Prior to Title IX, so back in the late 60s and uh, 1971, less than 300,000 girls participated in high school sports in California. Today, there are over 2.37 million female participants in sports. And nationwide, there's been a fourfold increase in the participation of women in intercollegiate sports. By 1996, girls constituted 39% of high school athletics compared to 7.5% in 1971. Although uh, it's well known for its impact on athletics, Title IX is not limited to sports. It applies to all aspects of education and types of sex discrimination, including sexual harassment and assault, science and math education and facilities, and course offerings. Last year, the governor signed into law uh, a law ensuring that California university campuses have policies to prevent pregnancy discrimination for graduate students and that students are aware of their Title IX rights. One of the main reasons that women exit STEM fields is that most colleges and universities do not provide leave for pregnant graduate students nor do they always reasonably accommodate pregnancy, even though such accommodations are required under Title IX. We have seen a disturbing trend in graduate schools where women leave studies or academia because of the lack of options for balancing research and family. Among scientists, married women with children are 35% less likely to be offered a tenure-track job than married men with children while single women without children are almost as likely as men to get that first tenure-track job opportunity. Although Title IX's impact has been profound, there is still much more to do. Please join me in celebrating the 43rd anniversary of this landmark legislation, and I'd like to open the roll for co-authors. Seeing and hearing no further debate, Assemblymember Bonilla has asked for the first roll to be co- open for co-authors. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. The clerk will close the roll. 65 co-authors are added. And with that, we'll also take a roll call vote on this item. The clerk will open the roll. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll and tie the votes. Ayes 67, noes 3. The measure passes.